I don't think this one needs much of an introduction. and welcome back to TSPEC TV. Today I have the keys to something that is considered rather special in the world of Land Rovers and that is this Land Rover Defender Heritage Edition. So today we're going to be taking a look at what makes it so special before we take it out for a quick drive. As I'm sure most of you know, the Land Rover Defender ended production in January of 2016, but before it did, and to commemorate its lifetime, Land Rover produced a series of limited edition final models in three different variants. The first one was the Adventure Edition, which was, had more of an off-road focus with off-road extras such as underbody protection and a roof rack. Then there was the Autobiography Edition, which was more luxury focused. And then there was this one, the Heritage Edition, which which paid tribute to the first registered Land Rover Series 1 prototype known, known as Huey because of its registration plate HUE166, which is also here on the side of this one and every other Heritage Edition. There are 400 of these in the entire world and they are available in 90 and 110 variants. And this is, I think, one of only one or two in this country, Denmark, where I am filming right now. So the Heritage Edition offers a number of features, all aesthetic, to pay tribute to the Huey 166 Land Rover Series 1. Firstly, and most noticeably, is the Grassmere Green paint, which pays tribute to the pale green paint that all the original Series 1s, or the first Series 1s, were painted, because that was the only paint colour Land Rover could get hold of after the Second World War when the Series 1 was produced, and that paint was used in aircraft cockpits, hence why it was the only one they could get hold of after the war. So it is finished in this lovely grassmere green paintwork with steel wheels in matching colour. Up front we have clear headlights all round and a silver contrasting front bumper with a heritage style grille and the heritage badge. Then if we come round we've got again clear lens indicators, we've got the silver painted side steps, silver painted door hinges and the Huey 166 decal on the side which pays tribute to the registration plate of one of the or the first registered prototype Land Rover. Then down here we have the heritage style mud flaps which have the old style heritage Land Rover badge. Then around the back again we have the same mud flaps and another heritage style badge there. And finally a contrasting white roof. So if we move on to the interior we've got a number of key differences in here from the standard Defender. Firstly on the door we've got these polished metal door locks polished metal door handles with the beige canvas grip and then if we move down here we've got carpets with a heritage style badge on there unlike the rubber mats you would normally find in most defenders then up on the seat we've got a matching canvas to those grips on the door with the stitching and the leather on the side here which are just being protected by these waterproof seat covers to keep them clean and then over there we've got a matching uh, canvas finish on the cubby box but if we move up to the steering wheel we will see a heritage style badge in the center of that. Then over to the center console, it's finished in grassmere green paint to match the exterior bodywork color, along with these polished rings around the edges of the vents and the clock to contrast. If we move down to the bottom of the center console, we've got a heritage style badge down here, along with a leather grip to the handbrake with the polished metal style button on top. And then if we move over to the gear lever and the transfer box lever, they have these yellow and red collars around them, which is to pay tribute to the transfer box and four-wheel drive selector levers on the original Land Rover series, which had yellow and red knobs on top of them. And then lastly, to top it all off, we have the sunroof up there. 
And that is about all the features that the Heritage Edition has over the standard Defender, at least as far as I can remember. I'll edit in the other ones if I forget. Anyway, I think it's about time we jumped in and went for a little drive. I just realised that I forgot to mention a few things when I was filming just now, but rather than film that entire thing again, I'll just mention it now. Firstly is the key. And I don't know if this is a Heritage exclusive key, so if it's not, I apologise, because I know that all the later Defenders, the last couple of years of production, they had quite smart keys, I think. Um, I think at least they had these keys. I don't know if you got this quite posh central locking fob as well, which is the same fob you get if you buy a uh, Discovery Sport or something like that, you know, any of the other models. So I don't know if this is uh, exclusive to the Heritage or the, the final edition Defenders. You also get key ring. So if it's not, I apologise, but I still think that is quite a cool thing to show, because, you know, that's a pretty uh, special thing to have with a Defender. And of course it has central locking as well, but that's not that new, but pretty pretty unusual for me uh, in my TD5. And uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that this is not road registered. It doesn't have license plates on it, so I can't drive on the public roads, I'll just be doing a short trip on these uh, private gravel roads around here. But the reason it's not registered is because car tax in Denmark, which is where we are, is ludicrously expensive. I think it's one of the most expensive in the world. And basically you have to pay, I think, they have a weird system here. I think if you have a car which has, and just let me finish before you go what, if you have a car which has all its seats, so front and back seats, then you have to pay 150% tax on the value of the car, I believe. I think that's the number. So basically, you could buy this from the UK for the same price that anyone else in the UK would have to pay it, and then you would have to pay 150% on top of that, of the value of the car, to put it on the road, if you want to keep the back seats in. If you're happy to rip out the back seat, which would be a shame on a Heritage Edition Defender, then you can register it as a kind of utility vehicle, and then they will take the back seats out, and you only get the front row seats, um, and you pay lower tax, still a lot, but less. And this being a brand new 2016 Defender, you pay quite a lot. You know, for example, Nissa and I, it's a lot cheaper because ours are 20, 30 years old, so it, they're much older and it's a lot cheaper. It's still not cheap, but cheaper. So something like this with the back seats would be ludicrously expensive. So basically, one day, I think the plan is, it, it's not mine, by the way, one day the plan is to get it on plates, but that will be in a few years' time, um, I think, when it the, the, the cost reduces a little bit. So yeah, it's not road registered, and it is basically brand new. Um, because it hasn't been used on the road and it's not going to get used off-road because it is a collectible and for those of you that are going to whinge about the fact that it's a defender and you should use it yeah I kind of agree but the fact is we have we're in a very fortunate position that we have like 10 or 15 other Land Rovers <laughs> on this farm that we could use as workhorses and do use as workhorses so it would make much more sense to go and use all of those ones you know the TD5s and the V8s and the Pumas that we have instead of taking the very expensive, very special Heritage Edition and using that for towing trailers and going off-road and all that stuff. So it's going to stay kind of preserved for the time being, and it's only done 1,251 kilometres, I think it was. Um, so yes, it has been preserved. It is practically brand new, which is why it has these seat covers on, and it has some. I have some cardboard down in the footwell on my side down here. So that is the case with this Heritage Edition. Anyway, that's enough chit chat. I think let's start her up and go for a little quick spin before we finish off this video. I'm amazed at how refined this is compared to my TD5, which is not not refined in terms of Land Rover standards. But the clutch on this is very light, the steering is very, very smooth. You've got a six-speed box, it's very quiet. And it's still a Defender, it's still, you know, bumpy and rugged and not that ergonomic. But, you know, there's not anything you ever sort of care about with a Defender. And it just feels so cool to be driving. You think this is one of only 400 in the world and either one of one or one of two or three maybe in Denmark as far as I'm aware. I, can't, I love having electric windows in the Defender, that's quite weird to me. But it's very, very nice. 
and like I say, it is basically brand new. It's quite strange to drive a brand new Defender. I'm used to driving Defenders, which have been round the earth and back. It's the 2.2 litre Puma engine under the bonnet, if I didn't already mention that, because it is one of the last uh, Defenders, and that was the engine they had. I'll make sure there's no one coming. Don't want to return this in any other state other than how I found it. <laughs> It's still got new car smell in here as well. Again, something quite weird to experience in a Defender. You expect sort of diesel and wet dog inside a Defender. But it's very, very pleasant. We've got heated seats, got electric windows. It's very nice. And obviously it is a massive shame that they're no longer making these, but it's one of those things that it was always coming and it's never gonna last forever. But it is so cool to think that we have one of these within our family. Yeah, this isn't mine. Um, if you want to know, it's actually it actually belongs to Nissa's father, who is a bit of a collector himself, but it's not mine, sadly. And I believe the last Defender that went off the line as well was a Heritage Edition. And Nissa and I actually saw that at the Peterborough LRO show in uh, 2016, which was really, really cool to see. It's quite, quite amazing to think that it was the very last one. I'm just driving this so gently. I mean, <laughs> you know I like to rag my TD5 around a bit, but I'm not taking any chances with this one. Absolutely not at all. I know what a Defender is meant for, but we have other ones for that. This one's special. Not gonna mess this one up. Anyway guys, that was about it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed taking a look at this very special Heritage Edition Land Rover Defender. And if you want to see more content with it, then let me know. But I don't know how much else there, more there is to say or do, because it's not going off-road. It's not going to be used as a workhorse. Although, however, we might do an Out of the Barn episode with it as well. We can talk a bit more about it then. Get some cool cinematic shots of it. So if you would like to see that, then let me know. But I'm going to finish this video here. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like. And if you want to see more content like this on YouTube, then subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.